I work in the education team and just with schools and academies. Um, day to day is probably lots of absence, restructures, disciplinaries, capabilities and I think more and more restructures probably. So. I did a session on restructures. Key themes are probably just every school is going to be going through a restructure and then we looked at some top tips and kind of time frames, what they need to go through really. So hopefully it was an overview of the whole process. Wherever possible you want a restructure to finish in line with a half term or a term because obviously the impact hopefully is going to be going to be less. Is it going to be teaching staff or support staff? The main reason I ask that is if it's teaching staff there's only three dates a year you can end those contracts and obviously we then have to work back from that. For example to end a teaching contract on 31st of December we would have had to have given notice by the end of October. So a lot of schools realise we need to save now otherwise 17, 18 we're going to be in a million pounds of deficit. It's really worth trying to forecast as early as you can because most teachers will have a three year pay protection, so if you're looking at removing any type of TLR or reducing the pay in any way, normally there's three years pay protection. So what that means is that salary is not going to be reduced for three years. So you're going to go through this whole process and not get any savings for three years if you're doing it that way. You'll see here we've put LGBS members who are over 55. It used to be if they're over 55 and under 60, but the retirement age has changed so much now. Basically any support staff in the LGPS over 55, you want to be checking with the pension to see if you're going to have to top up their pension. So not only do you have to pay redundancy costs, but sometimes you might have to pay four or five years worth of pension costs. If you look closely in your funding agreement, there may be a clause that says any costs whilst or incurred prior to being an academy, so any, if you've got a teacher with 10 years service, you converted to an academy five years ago. Some of the funding agreements say that the EFA will pick up the 15 years worth of costs. I did a big restructure last year and I think they claimed back about 400,000 from the EFA. So it's a, it's a massive amount of money and, and it's something we looked into first because had we not been able to claim that back, we wouldn't be able to afford to do the restructure. So it's just about some forward planning, particularly finance based. Um, like I said, I know that's difficult now without the agreed funding formula. Um, I'm sure once that gets agreed there's going to be a lot of schools scrambling trying to do some um, restructures because I highly doubt it's going to come away with an increase in funding for you so from experience the more detailed clearer you can make that document the less gossip and the less issues you're going to have um, and you'll probably all know schools are quite hotbeds for gossip when you go through a restructure I've never seen anything like it um, so that's the other thing to just try and reduce is the amount of gossip and that just comes down to being quite honest and transparent. I think most schools are having to restructure because of budget cuts basically. I think the average secondaries had hundreds of thousands if not millions wiped off its budget so they've had all the increasing costs going up so like pension, NI, all of those costs going up and then they've lost close to a million so it's not a case of wanting to but they're having to restructure so they're not in a big deficit so yeah I think most schools are in a really difficult position and we've got to try and help them where we can. It's just an example of what you can transfer to a mat. And again, rather than having five individuals doing this at five schools, you maybe have one or two doing it centrally. So hopefully the, the error rates will be reduced, but also the, the amount of time and the, the actual salary costs. I think a lot of schools outsource IT more so than finance and HR, so it was quite hard to get a one model fits all example on IT. Once you get into the process of planning a restructure, when you have a conversation with your HR provider or, or us if we're supporting you, it is to plan, like I say, a job description around the particular skills that mean you could keep someone equal. If you've got three PE teachers, two of them are terrible and one of them's really good and has a particular set of skills, you may design the interview focusing on those set of skills in a way that means you can end up giving them the high score. So like I say, that's something you should have quite a detailed conversation around because it is a risky area. And obviously if you direct match somebody and not somebody else, the first thing they'll say is why aren't I direct match? So it needs to be quite clear. I think a lot of schools are now starting to use the bigger, wider kind of legal services. So um, lots of kind of property queries, safeguarding queries. So a lot of schools like to tap in and have all those resources there. So everyone who works in schools are normally really nice people. We're not there to kind of make profit or make money or sales, you know, it's education. So it comes down to little kids and um, I think that's what makes it rewarding for me is just thinking they're you know they're gonna get a better year's teaching or you know we can put some more money their way.